What up, though? And welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk, brought to you by Detroit Lions on the Prowl and Live Station Unite. It's your man, Kurt Still. Today is Wednesday. It's the first of the month. Get up, get up. Oh. On deck for today's <laughs> show, we look at possible breakout players for the Lions <laughs> offense. We discuss what to expect from Penn A. Sewell in year two and look at the Lions' recent personnel moves for more depth on that Lions' defensive line. But well, before yeah. we get to all that, man, y'all know what I got to do. I got to bring in the rest of the crew. Man, I just said it. It's my man, Will Chamberlain Jr. Jr. Y'all know who it is, man. <laughs> L.L. Cool. Tell us up, my guy. Somebody going to watch this, and I'm never, <laughs> ever going to be able to say, that's not what I do. <laughs> What's that, <laughs> Foundation? And good morning. Hey, man, y'all know who it is, man. It's that defensive line. Because, you know, we're going to talk about defensive line today. That defensive line coach from Jackson Northwest It's my man who? Who? Coach Jones. Who is Coach Mike Jones? What's going on, Lion fans? Hey, let's get this thing started. Right now. Let's go. It's Detroit Lions talk, baby. Up. And on the way up, we're going to buy the kneecap off. Yes, sir. We in the deep. Welcome back, folks. And we got another action packed show for you all. So, Kurt Steele, kick it off for us real quick. All right, man. Yeah, I know there are several offensive players poised to have breakout years for the Detroit Lions. Amara St. Brown put up big numbers and started in just nine games in 2021, grabbing almost a thousand yards. Wide receivers DJ Chart. Running back DeAndre Swift and former Pro Bowl tight end TJ Hawkinson are all returning from injury are looking to make a big impact for the new offensive coordinator Ben Johnson's new attacking offensive scheme. However, this is this a Kurt's opinion. It's only one player that needs to have, well, that's multiple, but the most important player that needs to have a breakout season is who? Lions quarterback Jared Goff. He has the weapons around him this season to return to his 2018 and 2019 season forms. He averaged over 4,600 yards passing, 27 touchdowns and 14 interceptions those two years with 11 wins per season. Now, Goff needs to return to that Pro Bowl and most improved player of the year form he had in 2017 if the Lions are going to have any type of success going forward uh, in this offense. You know, this year's success is going to be contingent on the arm and shoulders of one Mr. Young Jay Jizzle, as my man Coach Mike calls him. That is, to me, (laughs) you're going to have a lot of guys that's going. And I haven't even even mentioned Jamison Williams. And, you know, you look at what uh, the other Williams, Jamal Williams, did in the offseason, getting his body ready. You know, we looked at DeAndre Swift, man. That dude looks in jacked as hell coming into camp, man, coming into OTAs. But the player who has to have the biggest impact in the biggest breakout year has to be Jared Goff because the guys behind him can't do it. You know, Tim Boy ain't going to do it. David Bly ain't going to do it. And they put their trust in Jared Goff by not signing or bringing in any quarterbacks this year. So he's, to me, he's going to have to have a breakout year for the Lions to have any type of success. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think Jared Goff got it. It, it. it has to be Goff. Um, just because with this, with the offense and with all the new pieces, it's going to be on the quarterback to get the fluidity of the offense going. Um, if the offense, I mean, I wouldn't put it all on his shoulder, but the offense getting in and out of their mm-hmm. huddles and they're running smooth, it's going to all be on Jared Goff, really. Um, for him to operate it like a pro, because now you a seasoned pro. You you've been to a Super Bowl. You you a two time division winner. Um, it's it's time for you to you know to lead this offense. So, um, it, it's Jared Goff, man. So I'm, I'm with you, Kurt. Yeah, I, I mean I feel you. Go ahead, my man. I'm, I just I just had a thought when I heard Coach Mike talking about y'all's friends. I just thought, like, <laughs> like I just like, what would be the expectation if we still had staff? But we don't, so I ain't about to visit that. I ain't about to go down the road. But I just thought, like, dang, I wonder how people would be feeling about this team if we still had staff or whatever. They might still hate the team or how it goes, but you know, 
Um, mm-hmm. My breakout, um, I'm glad y'all let me go last because I got a bunch of them. Um, the ones, I guess, that I that I want or I'm expecting a, a breakout season from, um, we'll talk about um, in just a few moments. Number one, uh, Panay Su. I'm just excited to see what he's going to do in year two. I'm expecting that right side to be something crazy. I'm expecting that to be the side that we run to and everything like that. And he'll be the one on that side that's locking everything down. Um, I'm I'm excited to see what Cephas is going to do. I know a lot of people have him on the bubble. He probably is, but if he makes the team, I want to see him get some balls, man. I actually like Cephas. I was calling him big play Cephas and things like that. And um, my last my last guy going to have a breakout season is DeAndre Swift. I think it's imperative for y'all's friend to have a good season. DeAndre Swift is going to have to have a good season, and I think this is going to be it. We already hear what we're getting from the offense. Like, people expectation on the offensive line. We're getting ranked pretty high. Even if we don't hit it, let's aim real high. But I think that all that's going to do is help guys like Swift and then, uh, Jamal Williams and y'all's friend, Jerry Goff. Yeah, like, I keep calling my friend, man. I'll give you my <laughs> expectations. See, my, here's my thing. Y'all have excuses now, brother. You got all those right. weapons you had like you had out in L.A. Look at the wide receiving core. You got – chart coming in you got uh your boy Reynolds the, you know his whoopee you got Amara mm-hmm. St. Brown then you got Williamson you know Williams when he gets healthy you know you're looking at that what are you looking at you got Amara St. Brown that's that Cooper Cup type of guy uh you got uh those guys those uh DJ Chark and uh Jameson Williams those are the Robert Woods and and uh uh what's the uh Brandon Cooks type of players so you're looking at that and those were the most successful years he had out in L.A., and now we're bringing those tools in that are yeah. similar to those guys. So you got the tools, and then you you add in a healthy T, uh, T.J. Hawkinson. Man, you ain't got no excuse, brother. You got to go ahead and, and ball out. You know what I'm saying? You got to do yeah. your thing. If you don't, I, I'm telling you, look, <laughs> all, all, the, all the noise that I say that, you know, he's serviceable and he can do his thing, you know what I'm saying? I'll be, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll be tell you, I'm going to be like uh, like Sheila for I'm going to pull up on him. Let me smell my cologne, brother. Hey, man, what's going <laughs> on with you if you can't get this thing done with all the weapons you have on the roster right now? So those are our breakout player candidates of the year. Hey, if you like this content, gang, go ahead, like that video, share the video. You know what I'm saying? Get this Lions content to more Lions fans just like yourself. And, you know, as always, we got to do our family discussion topic for today. Who are your breakout player candidates of the year on offense, man? Drop us a comment down below uh, of the video. Uh, we know you're going to talk about it in the chat, but on the comment section, go ahead and let us know, because you know how we do. We take six of those things and read them on the next show. Hey, I got a special shirt on today, so I'm not going to, I'm going to wait to, I'm going to wait to show this one later on, but if you want to get yourself some Lions gear, go to fanatics.com, man. The new, I'm going to have to cop that thing. The new training camp or the sideline caps are out. Man, they got a camouflage one. That thing is heat. So go to fanatics.com. Links in the description below. And go ahead and check that thing out, man. And a small portion of the proceeds from that link go to help us go to content on this show. If you want to get yourself some Lions Station Unite gear, go over to lnushop.com or lionsontheproudshop.com to get yourself some Proud Nation gear. Man, hey, now it's time to talk to the man, the myth, the legend. I know he had them plates stacked up after every Sunday service by them aunties, man, on the Deacon Nest board. It's my man, L.L. <laughs> cool Torrance, man. What you got for today's show? <laughs> It's funny, like you were talking about yes, like I'm gonna come back with all the plates on my desk. I got back to work yesterday and they was asking me where the plate was at. So I didn't I didn't feel I didn't feel good about that at all. But um <laughs> as far as uh well my newsroom is topic, well I just want to talk about how excited I am to see what a what our uh our anchor on the offensive line, Penay Sewell, is gonna do in year two. We saw him in year one, he faced up with Aaron Donald. Uh, we don't know what the hell was going on, but Jonah Jackson sure did, and he was oddly shocked about whatever was transpiring. So I like it. Um, you know, he, he actually got to see him play both sides, and he did well on both sides. I know a lot of people said that he struggled. I didn't think that he struggled that bad, even for a rookie. I didn't think that it got work. I didn't think that things were worse on the left side with him there, even when it wasn't as you know perfect. Even when you know he was struggling, even when he was having his issues, it wasn't bad. You know, um, mm-hmm. so. Another year in the system, another year with our coaches, um, Ben Johnson and Dan Campbell, they seem to have a like mind. 
So I think the game plan going in will be a consistent one. So, you know, he'll be able to develop into whatever it is that they want him to be. And I'm just excited to see whatever that's going to be in year two. I want to see some more face mask grabbing, some more ass kicking, even some more knee biting. But what do you guys think? How what what does what does Panay look like in year two? Hey man, you know he had a great rookie season. In my opinion, he had a really good rookie season. Yeah. Solid uh, subbing for Taylor Decker, like you said. His play took off though when he went to that right side and he sat next to Big V uh, as that Lions starting right tackle. And we talked about this earlier: is some uh, how hard it is to play left tackle in the NFL. I saw he saw that up close and personal. You know, what I'm saying coming out the season, out the gate, but switching to the right side, he was like, man. This is a lot easier than playing over here on his right side. So he was kicking butt and taking names over there. Now, reports are that he is more vocal and confident in in camp this year. So he's out there being vocal. He's got improved strength from this offseason workouts, man. I think he's poised to make a huge jump in year two. I think, for real, to be honest with you, I think he can earn all pro and pro board honors this season. Uh, Starting on the right side from day one this season, I think that that will make those goals obtainable. What you got, Coach Jones? Um, I'm just excited because Panay is still stronger. That I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like that's mm-hmm. like, ooh, that that's that's a scary sight, man. When you when you when you <laughs> think about how how strong he could then next to Big V, oh my God. Uh that's gonna be that's gonna be some yeah. some moving, some road grading, some moving mm-hmm. on that side of the ball, man. Yeah, um, man. But yeah, Panay Su we're talking about just working on his body because he said that. You know, he he got down a little slimmer than what he should be because he's trying to he worry about running the 40 and all of that other stuff. And he's like, but now you really get to work on your body. You're not just worried about trimming mm-hmm. up, but you're worried about putting on that muscle and putting on that bulk to start to start, you know, dealing with these guys, man. And, and he said he he's the strongest he's ever been, man. So I'm just excited to see what Benet mm-hmm. Sewell look like with that, with that attitude. With, with some with some extra muscle. Oh man, man, and Dino, you lucky, you man. lucky boy. It's, <laughs> hey, I don't <laughs> tell you, man. When that dude go pull on one of those cornerbacks <laughs> or safeties, it's gonna be some slow singing and flower bringing. Yeah. <laughs> man, they like hit one of them cats, man. I like I'm that. You. But they sue, like, and they, he already was vocal. In a everybody saw the picture of the defensive lineman. Where they all kind of posed up in, in OTAs last week, where you had all the cats, Panay Sue tell, over there telling them, Yeah, get y'all blah, 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 blah over here and get the work. And I'm like, Hey, man, you ain't even on the defense. Why are you over here talking to these cats? So I'm like in that nasty attitude, man. Woo, we like my man LL say, It gonna be some kneecap biting in that thing with Panay Sue yeah. this year, man. And yeah. I, I like that. I like that uh, slow singing the flower bringing. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to run with that one. <laughs> Definitely, man. Hey, hey! if you want to hang out with the crew behind the scenes, man, go ahead and check us out on your favorite social media platforms. You know, we got the links on the screen right now. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and the ultimate virtual social media app for Lions fans by Herman Moore, Lions Nation Unite, man. So go over there and check that thing out. Man, you get to hang out with all of your favorite Lions personnel, the, you know, the, all of our guys that are content creators, they're all over there on the app, Micro Mike. You got Owens Forums. You got all those cats over there doing their thing. And we just post our content right there. And you can watch this show right there in the app. You ain't even got to leave the app to watch the show. So go over and check it out over there at Lions Nation Unite. Man, you can download that thing in the Google, Android, or Apple App Stores. Or just go to LionsNationUnite.com to go ahead and check that out man now it is time for my man mr one hit a quitter himself coach jones what you got on deck for today's show my dude all right so uh the lions as many people would think the lions are probably done adding pieces they won't let these young guys get acquainted to the roster and and you know the gm pulled uh not so fast and uh and uh they cut kicker uh, Aldrich Rosas, as uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, mm-hmm. yesterday, and they picked up defensive lineman John Kaminsky off of the waiver wire, who was released by the Atlanta Falcons, and he didn't last long because Detroit, you know, is, is second in priority when it comes mm-hmm. to people like that, and Detroit snatched 
mm, snatch them up real quick. And uh, Kaminsky is uh, actually 6'5", 275 pounds. Uh, you know, that's kind of, kind of a big guy. And at the combine, he actually ran a 4'6", oh. which is even more oh. impressive. Okay, he now he hasn't seen uh, much playing time, but uh, on the field, but he did see, uh, you know, quite a quite a good deal of snaps uh, Mm -hmm. with Charles Harris, the former Uh, Atlanta Falcon. So, um, you know, he played a total of three hundred and ninety seven snaps, which isn't all of that, which, you know, when you think of the course of, you know, how many seasons it's been, it's not really that many. But um, he he's produced 21 pressures and he's had a PPF grade of, or PFF grade of 67.4, which you know, which you know, uh, this is not you know, it's not too too bad. But they're they're not done quite yet, bringing in competition to to see if he can compete and make this roster. Maybe he makes the practice squad or. I don't know what their purpose really is to bring him in. Maybe they just want to see him. That's the guy that they want to get their eyes on and see how he fits in that skin because he's about the size of Aiden Hutchinson. Um, you know, mm-hmm. so, you know, um, people are saying, like, I don't know where Hutchinson fits. Well, they're bringing in another guy that's kind of in that same build, not saying he's going to produce like Hutchinson, but he's in that same build. So, um, you know, I just want to, you know, what do y'all think about the Lions continually – bringing in, you know, a guy here, a guy there to kind of make sure that everything's, you know, everything fits right. Um, Man, Rojas is a jack, man. If you see that dude, Rojas reminded me of uh, Malcolm Rodriguez. You seen that dude walk around the sidelines for a kicker. That dude pretty <laughs> swole. But, uh, hey, man, say la vie. We're going to holler at you on the way out the door, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? Like my man always said on Dev Comedy Jam, thank you for coming out. God bless you. Good night. So, uh, looking at this, man, Brad Holmes is focusing on that defensive line. The Lions passed for us ranked toward the bottom of the league last year, uh, and they want to improve those sack numbers with new personnel and that attacking scheme. Uh, I'm not really sure that Kaminsky makes that Lions 53-man roster. You know, we look at that picture the other day. You got a core of young, talented defensive linemen, man, and you're talking about ends and you know, we didn't even talk about the guys that's coming back off an of injury, you know what I'm saying, like uh, Romeo Aquara, and you got the other Aquara, you know, going to the outside linebacker, uh, maybe they're attacking uh, as far as a blitzing linebacker. You definitely got uh, the young guy, uh, Josh Pascal, you know, we got Aiden Hutchinson. So I'm not sure if this guy can really dent that 53-man roster. I think he's a depth pickup. He's a camp body. Uh, he has a spot, like you said, to make the be a veteran on the practice squad because you know, practice squad went up again this year. I think two more players, so uh, but I think that uh, that defensive line can make some noise in the NFC North. So I just think it's a depth piece. You, you have a guy who in camp, man, you know, we'll we'll see if how he does on hard knocks. Um, that's what I can say about him, right? Yeah, right. right. Um, you took the words right out of my mouth, uh, depth piece, camp body. That's pretty much it. I mean, he may, he may, uh, you know, mess around and, and make the team. Um, but I think it's more so for competition's sake than, you know, to have a guy like him to be there. You know, who knows what we just talked about, Panesu. We talked about the offensive line yesterday. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Maybe this is a guy that, you know, is outstanding in practice against offensive lines and stuff. We don't know. I don't know, but we will see. Yeah. Um, welcome to Detroit, John Kaminsky. If it's not a long stay. So you want to see, I guess. Man, I'm so excited for that defensive line this year, man, because you know what's going to happen? Man, some of these teams in the NFC North are going to up around and find out what we got going on in Detroit <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. hey, man. Kind of scary, so. man, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's a you'll mess around and find out what we got going on. I'm just – they call it the NASCAR package. You know what I'm saying? They, I'm excited to see what type of blitzes they run with Aaron, with Aaron Glenn, with the new scheme. And you look at some of those blitzes they ran down there in in, uh, in New Orleans and the type of person that we're putting on the team that's kind of similar. And we've got some speed and some youth. Man, look, I'm telling you, look at that, looking at that picture the other day, I saw them defensive linemen. I'm like, I'm excited for that thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited to see who doesn't make the team from that, from that picture. 
So I'm like, damn, we got we got some depth on that defensive line. So what you got, Coach? You excited too, Coach? Joe? He pumped up in that defensive line, yeah. Coach Bear. I know he already pumped up and ready to go about that thing right there. So hey, man, if you know, say we on that March to 4K, go ahead and like this thing. If you haven't done so already, I don't know what the hell you're waiting on because it's free. It's free, 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 nine, nine, free, and 53 cent free. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, man. We on that March to 4,000, man. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and go ahead and click that subscribe. But man, now it is time for us to do my favorite thing. What we're gonna zip our lip and see what you had to say on the last show, which was yesterday. It's time for those comment cards, baby. All right, first up, we got our resident law firm, Joseph Murdoch and Associates says, no trades needed. Well, guess that didn't happen. Well, we didn't trade it. We just kind of picked them up for way on the waiver wire. Continue to build in the draft. Yep. I agree with that. I don't think any of those trades that we talked about yesterday will come to fruition. I, I just think that they were just something that somebody had a wire hair up there behind and said, let's make these trades because none of them made sense to me. <laughs> right. right. Um, Admon Washington said last season, it was a lot of filling due to injury. This staff had many DBs switch off safety to cornerback to see the field and point of view. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I think that's going to set us up for um, for this year. I think that's maybe what they're doing, you know, just having guys cross train, mm-hmm. getting other experience, you know, just in case the inevitable happen. Thank you for that comment, Admon Washington. Mm-hmm. Right on. King SJ says, it's cool seeing our old line getting some national attention. Yes. But I'm with Coach Jones on sneaking up on opponents. Either way, hope we can some opposing D-lines get pancaked this year. Okay. With the proposed trades, keep building through the draft. And hey, man, we we just gonna keep doing through the draft, man. We're gonna keep doing through the draft. Yeah, I, I think that's how we're gonna roll too, man. Yeah. Just through the draft. Um, all right, Kevin Richard says, salute the Detroit Lions on the prowl. Well, salute to you back, my friend. And uh, we appreciate you checking out the show. Absolutely. Um, Joe E says, Thank you, panel, for continuing the Lions information. Love the show. I'll be trying, man. You know, you got to get it from somewhere, even though it's a lot of, of us out there. But, you know, keep messing with us, you know. Welcome. Right on. Bob Maskey says, we're going to we're gonna be on hard knocks. We ain't sneaking up on nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean well, anyone, but, you know, I got to put, I got to add my little, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. That, I mean, but the thing about, thing about that is, is I think hard knocks more than anything will turn the narrative around on the Lions and will make people start to fall in love with the Lions instead of easily dismissing the Lions. I think yeah. that's what the hard knocks will do for us. I think that I think I saw, I saw a report the other day that the Lions are the number one bad wagon team this year. Like, we're going to have more people on our bad wagon this year than any other team in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's going to come with hard knocks. I think with Dan Campbell being our head coach, it's going to cause some people to jump back on our bandwagon that left and some of the people who weren't messing with the lines in the first place to kind of, you know, come on over and be on the bandwagon. Here's my thing. Um, if you're a bandwagon fan, if you see me in the streets, don't say nothing to me. I don't want no damn bandwagon fans. You're going to be committed. Uh, <laughs> to the hey, hey, it's about time we got some, though, that everybody <laughs> gets The Packers get some. The Patriots get some. The Chiefs get some. The hey, Cowboys. On, all the Cowboys bandwagon just- fans. The, my only thing with the bandwagon fans is they always sound like bandwagon fans. Like, they just sound stupid as shit most times. And that's the thing that I don't like. Yeah. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a Lakers fan. I hate LeBron fans. And LeBron came, LeBron came. Oh, yeah, the LeBron fans, yeah. Saying all of this ridiculous shit about the Lakers. It's like, just shut the hell up. You weren't even a Lakers fan last week. So yeah. that's just, that's kind of how. I feel you. I hope it doesn't go to that extreme. I mean, whatever it is, it's good for the team. You know what I'm saying? They're going to make more money, more fans, more money, more whatever in the hell. But like you just said, if y'all, if y'all bandwagon fans, just shut, sit down for a while. Figure things out. You know, see what's going on before yeah, y'all get, just start. Get educated before stuff. you become a bandwagon fan for us because, yeah, right. we ain't we don't play that to... <laughs> <laughs> No, come on, but don't be Yeah, dumb. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, man, now it's time for my favorite show, uh, or everyone else's favorite segment of the show. It's time for Dessert with Your Man, Kurt, brought to you by Delightful Bites. Tasty uh, cookies, man, morsels, and treats uh, for any occasion. If you like how they look, you'll love how they taste. Go ahead and check it out. 
in the description below on my Facebook page. If you don't do Facebook, go over to Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram. If you was, want to drool all over your phone and your keyboard and your tablet, go ahead and check out some of those tasty morsels on those sites. Um, delightful Bites. Go ahead and get your cookie on. All right, today I'm wearing a special shirt. My man, Lion Man, the super fan. You know, y'all see him dressed up in the dog with the, like a cat. You know what I'm saying? He sent me his shirt and he's got his face on it, right? It's the Royal Up shirt. Now this Royal Up shirt, it goes uh, to his foundation and they donate 25% of the proceeds from these shirts go to the American Cancer Society. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of this video below, man. My man, Lions, man, he does the big things. He goes to all the games, home games, road games. He's a super fan. He does his thing. I met him over on LNU. Uh, this is a really good dude. I interviewed him uh, for uh, my fan media show uh, before, and he's just a, a great dude, man. And he does... Uh, so much good work uh, with his foundation and going ahead and, you know, and, and donating that money to the Cancer Society of Michigan. So my man, Lion Man, I appreciate the gear, man. Uh, he has more shirts to go over and check them out, man. If you are a veteran, he has a special veteran shirts over there with the Roar Up stuff on there as well. So go check that stuff out, man. Bro, uh, my man, Lion Man, doing his thing, man. Our brother, I appreciate you hooking me up with the gear, man. So Go over and check it out. Like I said, links in the description below, man. And I just thank you for blessing me with the gear, man. And, and thank you for what you do uh, for our community and with the cancer research, man. And he's a member of the underground. So you can check him out. He hangs out with Michael Banks, the other super fan that won the guy who got put it into the Ford Hall of Fans this year. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and Lala Fox uh, out there, the Foxy uh, Lions fan president, man. You, I'm telling you. The, uh, the underground is a movement. So go check those guys out on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, man, and find out about the underground fans. Uh, they travel to all the games, man. They're just a good group of people. So uh, go ahead and check those guys out. But that's your dessert with your man, Kurt, brought to you by Delightful Bites. Tasty and custom desserts for any occasion. Delightful Bites gets your cookie on. Now it's time to take that walk on over, man, to the Wall of Fame, baby. All right, today, we're going to hook it up. We got Midwest Lion. Ryan Stover's in the building. My man Q, or David Anderson, depending on the day of the week, says Robert Sano, the Insano, uh, and Raw Business is in the building on that bronze member show, All right, on the Wall of Fame, man. You know, we got our several members, man. We got Nomas J., Jason Porters, the Batman of the 313, John Martin. We got Shannon Peck, and we, you know, we always got Gold Lions. And then for the Gold members, we got my man, Mr. Reliable, Michael Huck, is always in the building. Turner C. Burley, man, I like I said yesterday, I saw you in your rows, brother, man. I see you doing big things. Michael Lewis, Randall Flag 606, Miles Gibbs, just in the D, Dominic Davis. Paul Jerose Lionel, the lady of douchebagia, and the doctor, Dr. Detroit. He is always in. To become a member of the Wall of Fame, click that join now button in the description. Now it's time for final thoughts for today's show. My man, my mellow, get on the mic because you know you eat jello. Hell, hell cool towards my man. What you got for today? Yes, yes, I do eat jello. But um, on this Wednesday, of course, be kind, find yourself some dollar cones. It's going, well, I think it's supposed to storm, but if it's too hot where you're at, find a cool place to chill out. Don't let it get to you, you know. Hump day, rest of the week. Have a great one. Right on, right on. Um, uh, Brad Holmes, this is a, okay, uh, I see what you're doing, you know, but pump the brakes a little bit on just grabbing these players about the blue like that, man. I think we just need a little bit of time to to let them gel and let these players get, you know, acquainted with one another and let them, you know, let them get a feel for one another. Stop adding pieces, man. No, I'm, I'm just playing with you, man. I'm just playing <laughs> with you, man. I keep doing your thing, man. I'm 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 in support of of, of everything that you're doing. Uh, Dan Campbell, line up the troops, get them ready, man. I'm excited. Um, can we? We all can't wait for this hard knocks. We all glued to our seats about it, man. It's it's a good feeling in the Motor City and all of Michigan, man. It's hey, go Lions! All right, my man. Hey, final thoughts for today's show. 
we want to come up, man. Uh, it won't be to me. I, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm still kind of, you know, I'm not, you know, fully sold of what, you know, hey, we're going to be world beaters this year and, you know, and make the playoffs. But I think we could contend this year, you know what I'm saying, in our division, you know, make some moves. I've still got us at between <laughs> seven to 10 wins and we're going to do some big things in Detroit. Um, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Uh, it's just, it's exciting, exciting time of the year. You know what I'm saying? And, and bandwagon fans, man, you know, you're going to be who you're going to be, uh, roll with who you roll with, but you know what I'm saying? Don't leave when the time get hard because us, right. us diehard Lions fans, we've been around this thing forever. And you know what I'm saying? Some kid asked me today, other, the other day said, uh, you know, it's be hard being a Lions fan. Nah, man, I love being a Lions fan. That means I can endure. If I can put up with this, I can do a lot of stuff in my right. life, man. You right. being a Lions fan ain't for the weak at heart. <laughs> so so uh, yeah, we got yeah. you got to do our thing. Definitely being uh, a Lions fan, man. Again, I want to thank you, my thanks to my man, uh, Lions man, for you know saying hooking me up with the gear, man, and doing that work he does with the American uh, Cancer Society of Michigan. Uh, I lost um, my mom. And my stepdad and my uncle to cancer. So, you know what I'm saying? Any type of research for that is always going to be near and dear to my heart, man. So thanks to Lee. Again, my brother and salute. All right. um, Man, y'all know what day it is. It is hump day, baby. And it's the first of the month. So for all y'all <laughs> county check pimps out there, go ahead, do your thing. It's the first of the month for you, baby. Make that thing rain. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all going to be swiping them cars today. So go ahead and get that <laughs> thing going. I'm just messing with y'all, man. Make sure y'all pay y'all bills, though, I'm just saying. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is the first of the month, man. Go ahead and do your thing, man. We love you right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl, man. Hey, what you got to do, like I always tell you, if you get frustrated at work, because I know it's Wednesday, man. Sometimes the Wednesday can be hard. You got meetings that could be emails and all that stuff going on, man. But if you get frustrated, go ahead, take a step back, take a deep breath. Get refocused. If you need help, ask for it because it's always a sign of strength to ask for help when you need it. Because if you don't ask for the help and your boss is over your shoulder asking where's the report and you don't have it because you couldn't get it done because you were stuck, now you got a whole different set of problems on your hand. It is, like you said, Dollar Coney Day up there in Michigan, man. So go ahead and knock them things out. Man, if you're eating a Dollar Coney and you're enjoying the show, I need you to go ahead Mm, crumbs off your face, the onions, that coney sauce. You know what I'm saying? Finish your drink and get back to work, baby. And whatever you're doing in life, you got to boss up, fall out, and be the best version of you that you can be. But my fellas, LL and Coach Mike, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon. We love you, Jim.